Um, so this headline in the New York Times on a, April 11th, dumped milk, smashed eggs, plowed vegetables. This is what's happening in our food system today. And we're, everybody on this call is so aware of that. According to the USDA, local and regional food markets will lose nearly $700 million in sales through the month of May. Small farms, which represent 85% 80 of all farms in America, are now finding it tougher than ever to find markets for their food. And COVID-19 has led to a tsunami change in how people purchase food. So I am Marilee Olson. I founded Preserve Farm Kitchens 10 years ago to offer a vital service to small farms. And that is to make value added products for them with their labels on it to extend their, their cash flow, if you will, beyond the harvest season. We also purchase from small farms for our award-winning line of branded products. As every entrepreneur can agree, and certainly the people on this call, doing the right thing can be challenging. Preserve Farm Kitchens is proving that a right-sized, agile, locally focused kitchen, rather than a giant specialized food factory can work and produce delicious pantry essentials that consumers are willing to pay for and that are better for the planet. This is an older figure, but in 2014, the size of the artisan food market in America was 109 billion. Today, it's close to 150 billion. I think it's safe to say that that market is only going to grow. But how do we capture that market without causing further degradation in the environment? I'd like to suggest that the menu of solutions must include a decentralized food system with robust local food processing and packaging capabilities. We've worked with over 40 Northern California farms since 2010. Um, Evan Wig is on my board of directors, um, and um, many of you are friends that I've, I've worked with over the years. We've processed over a half million pounds of produce while creating a workspace that our team members love and feeding the economy, the local economy. Because we're an agile right-sized kitchen, we can take 400 pounds of Petaluma strawberries, which we did today, and 700 pounds of Russian kale and process those on the same day. We couldn't do that if we were a true factory. By the way, did you know that this country once had 3,800 local canneries? Today, there's only a handful. If, that, if we could return to that, do you think food waste would be the issue that it is today? Was small farming in America much more vital then than it is now? Is this pandemic asking us to turn back the clock? But for all that Preserve Farm Kitchens has done in 10, in 10 years, we can do so much more. We need to raise money and find strategic partners, really critical, to add capacity, especially in the winter and spring months when the foods that we normally process can't be processed the way we do. We need to add a dehydrated food line. We need a more fully automated filling line for efficiencies and to get our margins more aligned. We need more cold storage. And we have to hire necessary talent, especially in production management and sales and marketing. The number one thing that I've learned is that scale really does count. There's a sweet spot somewhere between one and $15 million in revenues for a modestly profitable food production enterprise. And Preserve Farm Kitchens needs your help to get there. Marilee, yeah. I'm gonna cut you off. And thank you. it's painful to do it, but you did such a beautiful job. And before I kick it to Jonathan, I just wanna say, sitting at this intersection of all the food systems work, everyone here that's presenting, this is really what we need to do. 
um, you have this solution, we need to fragment, um, decentralize and provide the right size solution so that community scale food can happen. So thank you. And Jonathan, please uh, lead us with a question. Sure, uh, Marilee, thank you. And I love the work that you're doing, helping to save food from being dumped because it's tragic. Um, can you just talk a bit about distribution, kind of where you distribute, and then also how you market and raise awareness about um, your products? Sure. So we have um, we have always been a, a fairly very small, small organization. I hired for the first time a sales and marketing person last year, um, and he's now on furlough. Um, we try to self-distribute as much as possible. We are in the 46 Northern California Whole Foods stores, and we've seen a 10 times increase in demand for our branded products at Whole Foods in the last three weeks. Um, so I, I prefer to stay with the self-distributed model. It's challenging for a very small company, but I think that that's the only way that we can uh, deliver on our promise to pay those farms a fair market value for what they grow. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Marilee. And Jonathan,